Hi there, my name is Trolls and welcome to SoundPaint. In this video, we're gonna explore our arpeggiator. The word arpeggiator stems from the Italian word arpeggiare, which means to play a harp. If you imagine when you play a harp in a strumming fashion, for example, if you play a C major chord, you go C, E, G, making up for the chord, or you can play the other way as well from G, E, C. And it's sort of a broken chord where you divide it into individual notes. And that's exactly what the arpeggiator is. If you imagine Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, for example, doo -doo -doo, that way it's a chord, but it's played with individual notes. That's really the essence of the arpeggiator. And even if you haven't used them before, just watch this video and hang on here. They're so easy to use. And I often use it in a way where I'm sort of playing music with the engine. We have this hold function where you can take a chord, just do nothing and lean back until you figure out what you want to do next. And it's kind of like making music with the engine. We also have a variety of new features that haven't been done in arpeggiators before. For example, you can have the arpeggiations jump in intervals. We also have this beautiful ability to pan the stereo field of the arpeggiator and many other things. But I say, let's just get inside of the computer here and let me show you from the inside. I like to use it on synthesizers. I like to use it on percussion. I like to use it on drums. You can actually make it into a full-fledged drum machine as well. But uh, yeah, let's get in there and I'll show you. In order to access the arpeggiator, just click on ARP here and you are good to go. One of the unique aspects about the ARP is that you can very quickly change the amount of steps you want in it. So just drag up here, for example, let's say we want 24 steps. And in a normal arpeggiator, you'll sort of be used to clicking each of the steps. But in this one here, you can just hold down your mouse button and quickly sculpt your arpeggiations. It's also velocity based, which is super cool for more advanced instruments. I'm just going to click here on clear steps and you'll see that it's back to its original state. But let's get started. If you look over here to the left side, you'll see that there are different modes for the arpeggiator. I'm going to start with the keys mode here. Keys is essentially just the ability to play the keys if you want and make arpeggiations out of it. You can also use your sustain pedal, which I'm going to do here. So it's essentially just like playing a normal piano for the arpeggiator. The Juno 60 is just so freaking juicy. Let me just try to hold down one key and just listen to the micro variations in it. One of the awesome, beautiful things about SoundPaint is that we have natural variations even for synthesizers. So it's not an emulation of a Juno 60. It's really like sitting with the real unit and just being there. Just one note is beautiful. The next mode in our arpeggiator is the hold mode. Hold is sort of a throwback to the old synthesizers that used to have it. Essentially, it's like holding down your sustain pedal. I like to use it a lot because it allows me to sort of just relax when I'm making music and not think too much. Sometimes just lean back, let the chord play out, think what I want to do next and then do that. It's a super chill kind of art mode, if you will. The third mode in our arpeggiator is our step-based sequencer here. This one is beautiful, especially if you have velocity-based instruments, you can really sculpt unique things with it. Let me just show you here quickly on an 808 just to show you the basics of it. And I'll be recording a groove with the step sequencer and then essentially just click play and have it play. It's really, really good for drum grooves, percussive programming and that kind of stuff. Let me show you. All right, let me try to record that groove into the arp. Let me just click here on clear steps so we have a clean slate and then I'll record the same groove right now but having the step button here active so it's recording what I'm doing on the keys. And then I'm just going to click the play button down here. Let's listen to it. Now 
and I can also trigger it again, but then go in and adjust some of the velocities here and change the rhythm. Let me just show you. Let me show you another example of that. In this case here, I've loaded a drum synth and I'll just try to play a groove on the keys again and then I'll record it into the step-based recorder here. And let me just try to record that into the step-based sequencer here as well. And let me just clear it up here. All right, let's listen to that one. Click and play down here. And it's just to show you how potent it really is. It's an awesome, wicked drum machine. Let me try to load like a Taiko ensemble in it, which is very much velocity based. So you can see how delicate it is using velocities here in the step based sequencer. Okay, so that was the step-based mode in the arpeggiator. We also have a live mode here. Imagine the arpeggiator just keeps recording in a loop and you can just insert notes in that loop to whatever degree you want and create new grooves that way. Let me show you here on a drum kit. So it can be one mean drum machine. I love using the art for this kind of stuff, especially when you have velocities. And keep in mind, in sound paint, anything that's velocity based has infinite dynamic ranges. So it's really easy to sculpt very unique, soulful grooves because you're not limited to just a couple layer of samples. There's infinite amount of them. It's so cool. We also have a trigger mode inside of the arpeggiator. Trigger allows you to input a groove, for example, using the step sequence here, and then just trigger that groove by holding down a single key. So let me just record something in the step sequencer and then let's use the trigger mode afterwards. And if I activate the trigger mode here, essentially I could just trigger whatever I just recorded on my keyboard here. So those are the different modes inside of the arpeggiator. Over here to the right, you'll see we have type octaves, note reps, and intervals. Let's start here with types. Type is another way for the way that your arpeggiator behaves. So for example, we can play chords, which means that the sequence is triggered in the same order that you're clicking your keys. We can have it go up, down, up, down, and so forth. We can also randomize it. Let me just show you the different ones here. So you'll notice in that one that I was taking full chords and all the notes are triggered at the same time. That's one way of doing it. Most commonly you will have one note at a time in that sort of more broken chord fashion. Let me try as played here. Again, it will follow the specific order that I'm clicking on the keys and trigger the whole sequence that way.
we can have it go up. We can go down. We can go up, down or down, up. Or we can randomize it. I also like the octave option. It allows you to play not one octave, but up to four octaves. So right now we are circling around the same octave, but if I go two, for example, you're gonna hear that it's gonna go up an octave as well. Or even up to four octaves. You can also choose how many times you want each individual note to repeat itself. So if you play C, E, G, it's like two times C, two times E and so forth. And then we also created a new interval function. I haven't seen this one before in arpeggiators, but I keep coming back to it because it will not only trigger the same sequence we just saw, but it will also insert intervals. So if you do a fifth or a seven, that tends to work fairly well. We also have a DAW sync function that will synchronize the arpeggiator to your favorite sequencer that could be GarageBand, Logic, Cubase, Studio One, Fruity Loops, Logic, whatever they're called these days. There's so many of them. And down here, you'll find our note value. Let me just show you how that works. This is essentially where you can set the time signature of your arpeggiator. Down here in the bottom, you can set the length or the swing of your arpeggiator. Length would be how tiny are each of the steps and swing, you know what swing is. You can also add analog behavior to the arpeggiator. That essentially means that it gets more and more unstable. Let me just try to play a little bit right here and add more of the analog stuff to it so you can really see how chaotic it becomes. That's a good example of how to just get lost in sound paint. It happens to me too often. You know, it's just so much fun because everything is right at your fingertips. The effects is only one doorstep away. You'll also notice that we have something called early and late that mainly relates to your DAW. If you want the sequence to be triggered before or after the normal click track, it's a specific function for DAWs. And last but not least, you'll find our pan mode down here. This offers you the ability to spread out the arpeggiator in the stereo field. And as a little bonus, I also just want to give a little bit of a shout out to our gate function. The gate is not an arpeggiator, but it can do a lot of the same sort of tempo sync. 
I love using the gate because it allows me to create rhythms out of material that is certainly not. For example, here in Haiti, you're going to be listening to a true voodoo ritual and then all of a sudden see how that can be mangled into rhythmic texture music, if you will. The gate function also has this intro here that will set a given amount of bars without the gate and then the gate kicks in. Check it out. You can also set the attack and release of each of the gates in it. So gates sometimes tend to be very sort of harsh. Every attack has a very specific transient because you're closing and opening the sound so straight. But with attack, you can loosen it up and the same with release as well. So you get a more soft sort of gate. So there you have it. This is sound paint. Fast, furious, fun. The arpeggiator is designed with the same purpose, just to get you closer into the music and not having to think too much and really just be present with the software. In many ways, sound paint is all about that. Whether you're a professional or you're a newcomer, it's really just designed to immerse yourself into the music and not having to think too much about user interfaces and sliders and knobs and all that stuff. This is just really to shorten the distance from your musical thought to your actual creation. So anyway, it was such a pleasure to show the arpeggiator and the gate, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.